Kiana Plebes, in this video, I'll be discussing five study myths that I've been seeing circulating around on social media, and I'll be discussing how they may be limiting our academic performance in PA school. Stay tuned. Again, my name is Mario Navarro. I am a second year PA student at UC Davis in Sacramento, California. All right. So here it is, the five study myths that I wanted to you know, tell you guys about. All right. So the first thing that I'll be talking about is the VARC model of learning. If you've you know, gone to school you know, in the United States, you've probably heard of this. The VARC model of learning is this idea that we learn best in our learning styles. And so VARC stands for visual, auditory, reading and writing, and kinesthetic. Turns out that recent research has shown us that this is actually a myth. This is myth number one. Students fall into different learning styles and learn better when instruction is adapted to that style. This is a myth. Within the last 10 years, there's been research showing that we actually don't have a learning style. A little history about this. Where does the idea of learning styles originate? In the early 1990s, an educator by the name of Neil Fleming was trying to understand why during his nine years as a New Zealand school inspector, he had witnessed what he deemed good teachers who were unable to reach every student while some poor teachers who were able to reach all students. He struck upon the idea of the learning styles and developed the VARC questionnaire to determine someone's learning style. While Fleming did not coin the term or concept of learning styles, his questionnaire and categories of learning became very, very popular. And while it's unclear exactly why the notion of learning styles took off to the extent that it did or the fact that it stuck, and there was something inherently appealing about the easy fix it solution that it promised. And it does sound pretty easy. You know, if you're not learning properly, well, let's evaluate what your learning style is and administer all of your learning in that style. The reality is research has effectively disproven the notion that students fall into different categories of learners, such as the visual, auditory, kinesthetic. Research conducted actually by a professor and by the name of uh, Dr. Huseman, who's a professor of anatomy, cell biology, and physiology at Indiana University School of Medicine. She was a co-author on this paper that uh, showed evidence showing that students generally did not study in accordance with their learning style, and that even when they did, their test scores did not improve. In other words, they didn't learn any better when attempting to learn in their supposed learning style. The fact is, it's okay to have a learning preference, and, but these preferences do not necessarily contribute to better learning. Myth number two, learning is best achieved when we hyper-focus on a single topic or activity. This, guys, is also not true. Um, as I've discussed before, the interleaving effect, uh, space repetition, and uh, the act of actually learning in random order um, can actually help you remember it and, and improves long-term retention. And like I said before, we got to practice like we play. Um, when we're being assessed in on PA school examinations, these are, you know, you're being tested in random order. And so, you want to tap into that by, you know, sh shuffling, you know, your, your, your Anki cards or don't just spend, you know, your entire day working on one specific subject. Myth number three, you can probably guess it has something to do with highlighting better study of the notes I've highlighted. It's number three, passive forms of studying, like reviewing notes, rewriting notes, rereading, rewatching lectures, especially if you've seen the lecture once already and highlighting our effective study strategies. Um, so what I want to say about this, because I know that this is widely used and, and, and I have, you know, classmates who use this and is that it does work. That's that's I want to make that very, very clear. It does work. But the research shows it is not the most effective study strategy. And if you're a PA student, you need you. I would imagine that you would want to be tapping into study strategies that have been research proven, just how, how we're learning uh, research backed treatment options and evidence based practices in, in the way we approach our patient care. We should be doing that in the way we approach our learning. We should be using evidence based learning methods um, to you know improve our attention and ultimately to work smarter, not harder. Myth number four, we are good at judging our own abilities. This is also cap. We are not good at judging our own abilities. So this is the idea of saying like, okay, I studied all day and I think I'm good now. I think I'm ready for my exam. I think that I've learned everything that I'm going to learn. We're actually not very good at that. In the book, Make It Stick, they actually mentioned this effect called the Dunning-Kruger effect, in which states the least competent overestimate their competence the most. The least competent overestimate their competence the most. Say that five times really fast. 
make it stick describes this idea of the illusion of knowing arising from ineffective learning habits like rereading and rewatching lectures. And so, guys, the best way to overcome this is, again, like I said before, doing practice questions and assessing your knowledge and, and not only viewing those practice questions as an assessment, but as a key tool to learn and to and, and, and to grow and to go through that process of struggling, of failing and of ultimately learning. All right. And for the final myth, myth number five, A students, and this refers to grades, A students or smart people learn the most easily and therefore get the highest test scores. This is just not true, guys. Those who adopt a growth mindset are the most effective learners. And so I struggled with this when I first started to undergrad, when I was trying to improve my, my grades, I needed to come to the self-realization. And I hope that I can help you get there, that you are fully capable of being whatever you want to be. You're fully capable of, of putting in work, of struggling, of failing and growing into the person that you want to become. Those who adopt a growth mindset are the most effective learners. Yeah, so I hope this stuff made sense. And the last thing I want to leave you guys is with this reminder that your grades, again, are not a reflection of your intelligence or ability. Your grades are a reflection of two things. Your study techniques, your study techniques, the principles, the things that you do, the game plan in which you choose to attack a certain test, a certain assignment, and your discipline, and your discipline to sit down and get the work done. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And I appreciate you guys joining me on this five-part series of how I study and how I got A's in my didactic year of PA school. If you found this series helpful, you know, leave a comment. Um, I, I enjoy interacting with you guys, and I'm here to help you guys um, not just, you know, survive PA school, but thrive. Um, so I appreciate the support. I'll be talking to you guys soon. Animal place.